You are in this world because you are in love with the being you believe yourself to be. You may say that is not true, but I say it is impossible for thought greater than itself to know. Do not believe anyone who claims to know. Do not believe anyone who claims to love someone else more than they do themselves, for they do not. It is impossible for thought to be greater than the image it believes itself to be. Yes, you want companionship, security, and health, for these are all part of the image you fell in love with and entered. From Neville Goddard's 1968 lecture, A Prophecy. Neville's trying to tell you that the reason you are and in the dream of life is because you loved yourself so much and wanted to express yourself. That's why you dreamed this dream of life. And we often search for love on the outside. But when we truly come to see that the world is us pushed outward, it was our own love we were seeking the whole time, the love that has always been there. You are now alive because you, a living being, have given the image called by your earthly name life, and you will transform it into a life-giving spirit, because that is what you really are. Before this drama called life began, you predetermined a perfect pattern called Jesus Christ, which would lead you back to where you were prior to entering the image. Neville is just going on to say you dreamed this dream of life. You gave it energy. All that you are, you brought to life. From your body, right down to your name. But it was not to go on dreaming endlessly. You weren't here to simply dream away, but to wake back up to what you were before you were even born in the dream of life. peeping through the Sakura. Use the same technique God used to become you, as one whose name forever is I Am. God fell in love with you, his image, and entered it. Now knowing you are, you say I Am. So God is occupying his image and now answers to the name you were given at birth. Just as God fell asleep and dreamed the dream of life, Neville saying, you can do the same. Imagine something and fall in love with it. Enter the vision. Become it. To the point you forget you are dreaming. You are it. Neville goes on to say, intrigued by the idea of expressing himself in a body of flesh and blood. God entered this body by dreaming he is Neville. God laid himself down within me to sleep, and as he slept, he dreamed he was I. For 1,959 years later, when God awoke, I knew not that I had slept. And upon reflection, it was as though it had not been. For when God achieved his objective, which was to awake, and was conscious of the fact that he had the one he loved. All time vanished. So God dreamed he was Neville, and then in the dream, Neville woke as God. So God had fallen asleep completely forgetting, and dreamed the dream of life, and that he was Neville, but then Neville awoke in the dream of life, woke as God. And that was the whole point of it all, to completely forget, to completely enjoy, but it was always planned to awake again. But it was all done in the name of love to enjoy. And all moves beyond time. Just like night dreams, what is time but an illusion? When you go to bed at night and you have a dream, it can transcend time. Everything can happen so fast or can feel like years and years have passed. And yet when you awake, you've only slept six to eight hours. So what does this figure that Neville talks about 
that it took so many years to awake. It is just symbolic for what degree God has lost in his dream. Neville goes on to say, To what degree are you lost in your dream of success? Your world is your dream pushed out. When you can persuade yourself 100% that you are successful, success is yours. You must become so intense that you completely forget it was only a desire. You must tame the wild new state you have entered until its naturalness causes you to forget all else. That is how God became you. What complicates it for most of us, why we don't always see the results we want, because we don't see the world as our self pushed out. We see it as something outside of us. And how do you persuade yourself 100%? You must do it in imagination and repeat it, because there is this part of our consciousness that is not only influenced by what we think we're seeing in reality, but also what we can see in our imagination. People are already good at daydreaming and fantasizing but often from where they're dwelling from. When we can learn to tame our daydreams, our fantasies, we create like God, the same way God became us. We stopped at the 7-Eleven for some fruit tea. Oh, I don't know, you got ice cream. What kind of drink is yours? Whatever that is. Okay, to Japanese ice cream, Mike. Mm -hmm. Come on, stripper, before the light turns. Green! I mean blue. You say it's blue. Now, is that blue or green? Japan says blue. Bluest green. No, the greenest blue. I'll hold that for you. <laughs> Want me to hold that while you're driving? How is it? I got your lips. Oh, well. Oh, any chance sample? Mm, it's like America. And why do we have to tame it? Because most people without any mystical training. They react to different things, they fall into different daydreams, have different fantasies, either about things they don't really want, but they're used to, they're expecting. Or if it is a fantasy of something they want, it gets overcrowded by doubts and fears the rest of the day. So that is why Neville is telling you to tame this wild new state so that you can intentionally daydream and fantasize and fall so deep into it like when you naturally daydream or fantasize during the day that it's as real as a world as you call reality. Is this a cute bathroom rug or what? <laughs> In closing, Neville says, the same technique God used to make you real can be used to bring your desire into being. Blake said, if the spectator could only enter into the image in his imagination, Approaching it on the fiery chariot of contemplative thought, if he could only make a friend and a companion of one of these images, he would rise from the grave and meet his lord in the air, and then he would be happy. Neville is saying, too much we talk of our wishes, but we haven't learned to really think from the wish. When you do, you become a friend, a companion to those visions, and this is the way to wake from the dead, to rise as a creator the creator of all, and this is where your happiness will come, because everything can be fulfilled in imagination when you live by it. Now, let us go into the silence.
good. Someone told me to order Wagyu. Oh, yeah. It is really good. This is Wagyu, black mm -hmm. Wagyu. Weishi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weishi. Someone pretend they want it. 